The land explored by our ancestors extends from the Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition, Shells of Nomads, continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. A group of scientists led by Pilgrim of the 21st century, Saparis Kakov, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in Trails of Nomads program. Today's Trails of Nomads episode presents What are the similarities between Kazakhs and representatives of the Indian's largest tribe, Navajo, in North America? What is the philosophy of Navajo life? To what generation were marriages between relatives of the tribe considered unacceptable? Taming a horse has become one of the most important stages in the development of mankind. Domestication of this animal opened up good opportunities for ancient people. It has already been scientifically proven that a horse was first tamed on the territory of the present Kazakhstan. Gradually, the experience spread throughout the world. Evidence of this conviction related to the Enneolithic era was found during archaeological excavations at the Botai site in the north of Kazakhstan. It is worth noting that the American Indians are confidently riding a horse, and this fact speaks in favor of the version about their Altai origin. Having examined the ancient sites of the Indians in the Walnut Canyon, the participants of the expedition Trails of Nomads headed for the city of Page, where there is a large reserve of the Navajo tribe. Navajo is one of the largest Native American tribes living in North America. According to the 2015 census, their number was 311,000 people. They call themselves Dene, and the Europeans call them Navajo. Representatives of this tribe live in the states of Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah. The native language of Navajo belongs to the Atabas language group, but only the older generation knows about this. Modern Indians speak English. Their traditional religions are Pietism, animism and Christianity. Navaka Kalkmin, Kazakh Kalkin Arasdaga, Kub Jagleda, Oxastok, Barakin Biz Osraki in the Bilik. Yen won't be stirred. Here we learned about the similarities between Navajo and Kazakhs. There are several examples. Number four is considered sacred to us. Just like us, they honor this number. Every Kazakh should know his ancestors to the seventh generation, and they have similar tradition. They always know their ancestors to the fourth generation. However, there are those who know ancestors up to the 15th and 20th generations. The reserve has history and culture museum of the Navajo Indians. First of all, the expedition team visited it. According to the exhibits, one can understand that the main activity of the tribe was agriculture. The museum has a large number of items intended for raising livestock and farming. There are many dishes for storing grain and dairy products. The Indians also processed leather and wool, sewed clothes from them. The Kazakhs were engaged in all this too. To my right, there are dishes for household. Next are the hand mills. They slightly differ from ours, but the basis is the same. Look at this flour. Their main culture is corn, from which they get flour. These are all three types of mills designed to produce flour. Мақсаты 
kişi bu akıllı programımız bizim aldığımız zaman. Klim tokutun aparat diye bulat. Bu mene jüp bizde de sonda. The next thing we see is a carpet making machine, and here are threads. Kazakhs also used similar items. A thread is obtained from wool, and then a carpet is woven from it. The ornament, of course, is a little different, but we also use a similar pattern. There are many common things in tailoring and decorating. <laughs> Representatives of the Navajo tribe are considered the best masters of weaving. Their multicolored carpets and quilts are known throughout the world. The appearance of these products is associated with the legend of a spider woman. It was she who climbed the four sacred mountains to find all the necessary tools for weaving. According to legend, on the last fourth mountain she prayed to God and after that the art of weaving appeared. This legend also traces common cultural roots. During the manufacture of carpets, the Turkic peoples also asked for support from the Almighty. <laughs> The next exhibit is a comb for yarn. There are many varieties and this is a spindle. It is very similar to Kazakh one. And the dress on the girl is also made of thread obtained using a spindle. Navajo is a nomadic tribe. In summer they live in the pastures and in the cold season they have the winter hut. Their homes are comfortable for roaming. They are quickly and easily disassembled and assembled. After visiting the museum, the Trails of Nomads expedition members went to the open-air complex, the ancient site of the Navajo tribe. Their traditional house is Hogan. In shape, it resembles a Kazakh yurt. However, materials are different. This is most likely due to the geographic location. Now we arrived to study the living conditions of the Navajo tribe who live in Arizona. Our people have much in common with this tribe. Firstly, their housings are very similar to the Kazakh yurt. The main difference is that we use felts of sheep's wool for sheathing the yurt, while the Indians coat clay on their dwelling. The shape of the dwelling is very similar to a yurt. There are two kinds of Hogan, for men and for women. Hogan is very similar to the Kazakh yurt. One part of the house is designed for weapons and a horse harness. That is what men mostly use. In the other part, there are items and utensils that women use. Thus, the traditional dwelling of Navajo Hogan most likely originates from the Kazakh yurt which is considered one of the first architectural structures in the history of mankind. I noticed that entrance door is in east of the house. The Kazakhs also have doors in the same direction. The first rays of the sun should fall into the house. The life of the Navajo tribe and the Kazakhs is very similar. The Navajo tribe and the Kazakhs have a similar worldview. The philosophy of life implies harmony between the human and the world. Even the shape of the home has a deep meaning. For example, a yurt is spherical in shape similar to the earth, and its shanarak is as round as the sun. That is, there are no corners in the house. Until today, people don't sit around the corner of the table. The Navajo tribe has the same traditions, but some modern representatives of this tribe have slightly different views. Changes have occurred since the beginning of the 20th century. The, most of it is built, well, the, the biggest thing is the direction east, okay? And then the, the next biggest thing is Shabake. When you build it, you build it with Shabake in mind. You start building around from this direction. You build all the way around in the continual growth direction, Shabake. And then same thing when you build this dome here on top, you start with that pole and you go all the way around. Yes, and you, you, you build in a spiral all the way up. You'll see that here, this pole, this is the bottom. This is the top. So it's bottom to top, bottom to top, all the way. So that principle, it's continual. 
The Navajo tribe connects to the appearance of its national traditional home with the legend of the wolf. Coyote's spirit helped man and woman build Hogan for the first time. Coyote is one of the varieties of wolves that live in North America. The Indians have many different tales and legends associated with coyotes. Navajos, as well as Kazakhs, are very big experts in the character and habits of wolves. Thanks to many years of observation, they learned the methods and strategy of hunting these brave predators and successfully used them in battles. The wolf, as you know, is a symbol of spirit, the totem animal of all Turks. Four was nomads. Nomads. And we, we moved a lot. Yes. And then, um, then in, after the 1800s, we became farmers. Yeah, and and we, we still do that. Our mm. families, uh, they would have a flock of sheep. Yes. Uh, during the summer, they would take it up to the mountains uh -huh. where there's grass. Yes. During the winter, they bring them back down where uh, it's a lot warmer. Kazakhs have an omen. One should not count cattle in the dark. Navajo people also believe in this. They also give a blessing to the coming new year and see out the old year. The Indians also worship the cults of earth, fire, wind, and water. They were afraid of the strength of these elements and believed in their power. They could predict the weather by looking at the stars. All this speaks of the preaching of Tangrism. That is, the worldview, being, and culture of Indians indicate on Turkic roots. Uh, we have a prayer in which is called the Corn Palm Path Prayer in which uh, we wake up early in the morning. It's also called the Beauty Way Prayer. We wake up early in the morning before the sun rises. Yeah. And we take a little corn, piece of corn pollen and pinch out of our, our corn pollen pouch. And we take that and we tap it on our tongue like that. Mm -hmm. And we do that because it's very bitter. It reminds us that we're in this physical state. And then we take that and we sprinkle a little right here on our spiral. This is a very important uh, part of our body to us because this is where our spirit entered our body like a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. We represent the importance of this because in the Navajo, um, in the Navajo uh, traditional hairstyle is to pull all your hair back to here and then you roll it up in a bun and then you wrap it. So the women would do it higher, the men would do it a little bit lower. And so it's, it's a way of bundling all of your wisdom and knowledge and holding it here and it represents like, the importance of this area. The custom of the Kazakhs not to marry a girl from relatives up to the seventh generation is also followed by the Navajo Indians. However, they consider ancestors of four generations. That is, four is a sacred number of four representatives of this tribe, and the Kazakhs honor this number. The common roots are evidenced by the tradition of giving generous gifts to matchmakers. In our culture, we do have an exchange. Exchange. So uh, let's say uh, my son, uh, when he when he was getting married, he would take a gift to um, the fam the his family his of, uh, fiance's family, oh, oh. and uh, that was to teach to to say thank you for raising your daughter, oh. not to purchase. Oh, 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 oh. This is a traditional Navajo dance. All movements symbolize the life and activities of the Indians. They are very similar to the movements of Kazakh dances, Orteke, Tepenkok, Karajorga, Burke. Their national dance reminds us of the forgotten movements of the healers, shamans, dances of some Turkic peoples preserved such elements, for example, Yakuts, Altai, and others. I think it would be good if we revive our historical dances, for example, an eagle dance. Indians have many varieties of wind instruments. A special role is played by sabazgi or flute. 
The history of the instrument is associated with the development of livestock and a nomadic way of life. The instrument is an integral part of folk music. Thanks to it, the Navajo Indians managed to preserve the language and faith, the ancient traditions of the people. The Navajo language is not a written language. We don't have, we don't write it. I mean, today it is in the English phonetics you use it and uh, you write it down based on the way it sounds in English and they do do that, but traditionally it is not a written language. And uh, what you do is it's, it's, it's told orally. It's, it's brought down generation after generation in an oral manner. And so you tell stories, you sing songs and you tell prayers. The prayers, the songs, and the stories, they, they, they tell our history. Of all the Indian tribes, the Navajo language is most similar to the Turkic. Many words sound similarly and have the same semantic meaning. For example, Ata means grandfather, Ana, mother, Aga, brother, Etik, boot, Kaik, boat. Of course, in words from one syllable, there are random coincidences, but in words from two, three syllables, there can be no accidents. During a visit to the city of Page, the Trails of Nomads expedition team visited Kilton Benali. He is a representative of the Navajo tribe. Despite the fact that he lives in an era of globalization, he always remembers the traditions and customs of his people. According to them, he created a family and his children speak their native language. His everyday life doesn't differ from the life of a Kazakh family. Great grandpa, mm -hmm. they'll tell us stories of where they, where they went or where they come from. Mm -hmm. They'll tell us stories of their grandma, their mom, but as far as what you're talking about, like where where Indians originally came from, I would I would say yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of agreement to that to where we originally came from. But what what we have here in a small town is what we what we live off of back in our our culture cultural days. We so basically yeah, we do live in our our cultural days of what you're talking about. To scientifically confirm the kinship relations between Indians and Kazakhs, members of the scientific expedition took samples from Kilton Banali for DNA analysis. The results will be compared to the genes of other people's immigrants from Altai. Kilton Banali hopes that family ties will be confirmed. <laughs> We were in the dwellings of the tribe. Now, no one lives in such houses. Their homes are very similar to our yurts. They carpet the floor as we do. They also raise horses, eat horse meat like we do. This is very important because no people in America eat horse meat only representatives of the Navajo tribe. The sacred land of Altai is the golden cradle of all Turks, and for the Indians as well. Before they got to America, they had overcome a long path. We discovered a new civilization without forgetting our roots. Modern Indians are carriers of a unique Turkic code. The participants in the scientific expedition Trails of Nomads are engaged in the study of these issues. The next stop for scientists in the state of New Mexico is the city of Albuquerque, where the Pueblo Indians live. What are their similarities with the Turkey peoples? We will talk about it in the next episode.